Hey guys, Sack Tutorials, and today I'm going to be making the third video of my series How to Make an SPRX Menu, which I'm doing for MW3. So in the previous couple of videos, we were able to set things up, and we were able to uh, enable God Mode on the click of uh, left on the D-pad. Today we're going to be actually adding uh, some of the first HUDs to the mod menu. So the HUDs, again, the HUD elements are basically the visual aspect. So the background of the menu is a HUD, the text is all HUDs. So we're going to be doing some of that. I think for this video we're just going to be uh, completing the background and that's it. Um, and then we'll carry on next video with some with the text. Um, and we're also going to be working on our for loop. So let's go ahead into prx.cpp. And this is our for loop uh, from the last video. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is just delete this for int i equals zero. Uh, you know, this for loop right here. Not the whole thing, but just this for loop and what's inside it, the god mode function. So turn that off, and we're basically just going to be making this into a very, you know, logical sort of for loop uh, that covers about everything in our menu. Uh, before we do anything, let's go inside our functions.h, and I'm going to make a namespace. You can make a namespace called vars for variables uh, if you want, but I'm going to make an unnamed namespace like this. Um, Again, you can name it like vars. Uh, I don't really want to type out var vars because the variables we're going to be using from that namespace are very, very uh, widely used and we're going to use them a ton. Um, so I'd rather not type out vars every single time, but rather put it in unnamed namespace. And what this does is it prevents um, uh, the tampering of those variables when they are not needed to be tampered. It's just safer and it's a lot better than uh, declaring variables in the global space or scope. So as you can see it's called anonymous a namespace. If we were just right here it's the global scope. So it's better to define things in here. So for this video we're going to be defining two variables. Uh, throughout the menu we'll have many but I'm just going, going to go one by one. So they're both booleans. We're going to go bool menu open and then in brackets 18 make it an array. And actually before that I'll write bool menu loaded like that and again like I mentioned last video there are 18 clients on any Call of Duty game so whenever you see me working with clients or the number 18 that's just the clients so don't really question it just do it so now that we have these two we can go inside our for loop our thread and start beefing it up a little bit um, so the first set of logic and there's like a ton of if statements in here so first uh, set of logic is if the menu is not loaded. So if, if exclamation point menu loaded, then do this. So here's how it works. When you're inside the game at first, um, your menu is obviously not loaded when the game starts up. So if it's not loaded yet, then what do you want us to do? So when it's not loaded, we want it to actually store the HUDs and uh, that will kind of just load the menu. Um, but we'll add everything to these if statements. Uh, first we need to make sort of the skeleton. So if the menu is not loaded, and then um, put else. So if the menu is loaded, and you should also put an else for the if in game. So let's go ahead and write else. So that means if you're not in the game down here. If you're not in the game right away, we just have to write menu loaded equals false, because obviously the menu is not loaded if you're not in the game. Uh, we're going to make sure that's 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 true, okay? So, uh, if the menu is not loaded, we'll leave this be for now. Else, uh, this will be put um, if the menu is open. But first we'll make a for loop uh, for all the clients. For int i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than 18, semicolon, plus plus i. And inside this for loop, we can start adding stuff. So if the menu is not loaded, so if ex exclamation point menu, or not loaded, if menu is not open, if exclamation point menu open, then do this, and then underneath that um, else, meaning it is open, and the difference between menu open and menu loaded, so when your menu is loaded, it's basically off the screen and ready to use. When it's open, you could literally see it and scroll through it, so that's the difference. Um, if you think of it this way, uh, if your menu is open, it's loaded, but if your menu is loaded, it's not necessarily open. 
Uh, okay. So let's see. Inside here, we'll also put a for loop for int i equals 0, i is less than 18, plus plus i. And we'll put our store HUDs function inside here. But underneath here, we're going to go ahead and write menu loaded equals true, which makes sure that if we're in the game and the menu is not loaded, that it becomes loaded. And then inside here, um, this is where we're going to have all our buttons, basically. So if the menu is not open, uh, in this statement, this is where we're going to put the button to open the menu. So in this case, I'm going to be actually using left. I think that's my favorite button to use to open menus, at least MW3. So I'm going to write if buttons colon colon detect btn. And in its parentheses, we're going to put i for the client index, comma, buttons colon colon left. Like that. And make sure you put both parentheses at the end because there are a lot of parentheses. So if you click left, then this is gonna actually going to run a menu. So we have, we're going to make a function called run menu. And then else, meaning if menu is, lo is open, then this is where we give them um, all the options like scrolling and all that. So, but before scrolling, I'll actually uh, do if they click um, square. I want to use square to exit out of the menu or go backwards in the menu uh, or return. So if I can just copy this to be honest. I can copy all of that. And instead of left, I'll have square. And then underneath here, do buttons uh, up. So if they scroll if they scroll up, underneath here, down, and at the bottom. If they select something, which I'm using X. Now again, this is uh, this is all optional. Um, we're not optional, but this is all up to you what buttons you want to use. This is how I like to use menus. If you don't like opening it with the left, you could use whatever you want. If you don't like backing out with square, use whatever you want. I've seen menus with uh, so the scrolling being R1 and L1 instead of up and down, or selecting something else. Basically, uh, put in whatever you want. Uh, this is how I like it. So this looks about good, um, and we can go and start making our HUDs. Uh, I don't think in the last video I actually made a HUDs header, header file, but I added it anyway. And something I forgot to mention that is pretty important, well, it's not that important, but it's good to have, is at the top of every single header file, you want to have hashtag progma once. Uh, which basically avoids any confusion uh, if you include a single header file in multiple places so that nothing will be defined multiple times um, and this will prevent some errors. So put this at the top, I put this on top of every header file as you can see, uh, but you don't put it in the CPP file. Uh, okay, so in the HUDs, uh, to actually initialize a HUD element, we go ahead and write, um, also by the way, make sure you include huds.h inside your CPP file. So go into HUDs. So to initialize a HUD, you type game underscore HUD LM underscore S pointer and name it whatever you want. We're going to be doing the background, so I'm going to name it background and put 18 after it in the brackets for the 18 clients. All right, <clears throat> so you could just add all of them up here. Um, you can uh, you can actually put this in a namespace as well. I think I'll do that namespace rather than in a uh, global scope. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna have is the store HUDs function. So we're gonna go void store HUDs int client. And this will basically store the HUD element, like the background, off the screen and give it all its attributes like color and all that um, and size. But it's going to start off off the screen and when you run the menu it's actually going to go onto the screen. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. So we're going to be, so we'll just go ahead and write uh, background and then the brackets put client and then set it equal to set shader 
And then in the parentheses, we're going to fill this all out. So for client index, we're going to put client. For the shader, put one. For the width, and this is where you can experiment with whatever you want. I was I had I was working on a, a menu a few months ago that I'm not working on anymore, but I'm going to be using the sort of dimensions from that, which I have written down. Um, so again, you could mess around with whatever uh, you know, like width, height, and place on the screen, the coordinates, like whatever you want, color. But this is what I'm going to be doing. So you, if you want, you could copy me. So I'll write um, 200 for the width, 320 for the height, 900 for the x coordinate, which is off the screen to the right, uh, to the right of the screen. For y, I'm going to be putting 85, uh, which is the y coordinate. For the align, go ahead and put 0. And I want the background to be black. So for the RGB, go just go ahead and put 0, 0, and 0, because 0, 0, 0 is black. If you wanted to be all white, it would be 255, 255, 255. And anything in between is whatever colors. And for the last one, I'm assigned chart A. A stands for alpha, and that means basically uh, the transparency of the menu. And I don't want this to be fully transparent, obviously, but I don't want it to be fully like solid. So. I'm going to be putting 150, which is pretty in between ish. I think it's a pretty good one. And you can just end it off. So we just gave the background all its attributes and it's right, it's off the screen at this point. And then we're going to make another function called void run menu int client. And we're basically just going to be moving the menu onto the screen with this function. So go ahead and write move over time. Uh, and it's move over time because that's what it does. It moves over a very short period of time. So you could actually see it slide onto the screen. It looks really nice. Um, if you wanted to actually just move coordinates automatically and not move physically, then there is uh, set shader xy which you could do, I don't know why it's not giving me the parameters, whatever, okay. But I like seeing the animation of it moving, I think it looks really nice, so I'm gonna do move over time. And in here, first we put in the HUD element we wanna be moving, so I'm gonna be putting background, and then in the brackets put client, and comma. The time right here, short time, is the time in milliseconds that you want it to move. So I don't, I mean, obviously I don't want it to be too slow. I mean, that'd be pretty annoying, but uh, I don't want to be too fast. So I'm putting it at 200 milliseconds. That's pretty comfortable time for me. Uh, I think it looks very nice. For float X, this is where we want to make it different from this X coordinate. So here we have 900 and I want to be moving it to 500 on the screen. And then for float y, I'm going to be putting the same exact y coordinate as here because we don't want it to change y. We just want it to move horizontally. So 85. End it off. And lastly, we also need to have a delete menu uh, function. Void delete. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to call it delete HUDs because that just sounds better than delete menu. I don't know. Int client. And in here, you could just go ahead and copy and paste this and replace the 500 with the original one with the, from the store HUD, so 900. So if we just go through this whole thing, so first it's source HUDs. So let's say that's just off the screen over here. Then we click left, and that opens the menu. So the menu slides over here onto the screen. So you could actually see it. And when you click square, it does the delete, the delete HUDs function. So it moves back off the screen. And then to get it back on, you do run menu, delete, run menu, delete. Uh, so now we have these three. This will finish everything off of the HUDs for today. So go ahead and go back inside your prx.cpp. And the first thing we're going to do is do the store HUDs. So if the menu is not loaded, then that means that this, the HUDs are not loaded yet. And we want to load the HUDs. So type in store HUDs. And put I right here. And I misspelled that. 
like that. Put I for the client. Um, so you're in the game. The menu is not loaded. You store the HUDs. The menu is loaded now. So it moves down the logic. So if the menu is not open and we click left, we want that to run the menu. So we're going to write run menu and then put I for the client. All right. And then if they want to close the menu, we're going to be using our delete HUDs function. So let's go to square. And so we're going to put delete HUDs and then put I inside here. Um, then also underneath here, we're going to be putting menu open equals true because if the, if the menu is being run, then it is true. And make sure you put I in here. And you also put I right here, that would make sense. Um, and then when you do delete HUDs, then we want to say menu open I is false because obviously if you've deleted it off the screen, then it's not open. Um, and that pretty much sums up, I think, everything that we had to do for today. This should be good. So we can actually go ahead and test this out, if I'm not mistaken. So go ahead and click F7. Everything should be succeeded. If something's failed, then you've done something wrong. So go back and make sure you've done everything correctly. So now my PS3 is on, and I'm connected to it. So I can go ahead and go inside PS3 debug, which is inside the project folder, which for me it's called tutorial. And I'm going to go ahead and drop it into TMP. Actually, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to show you guys the whole, the whole process. It's not very complicated, but. So dev underscore HDD zero, TMP, and then drag your SPRX file in here. Make sure you have the proper eBoot inside there um, so that it'll run the SPRX, which we've made in the previous video. So now we can go ahead and test this. So here I'm on PS3. I'm going to go into MW3. And I will be back when the game is loaded up. All right, so I just went into split screen. The game just started. And let's go ahead and press left on our D-pad. So as you can see, well, there's there's a delay on my computer because of my PV, HD VR, pretty old. But there you go. As you can see, we click left, it open. Let's actually go ahead and click square. It goes right off the screen. It makes a nice sliding animation. Open. Close. Open. Close. So that's how the menu uh, is formatted. It looks so it's pretty nice. You know, the middle of the screen isn't covered up, so you can actually see everything. So this is how my old menu was looking. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty nice. Obviously, we can move around stuff. Open and close it. Wow, what a great menu! So if you got this to work, give yourself a pat on the back because uh, you'll probably be able to succeed in everything else. So this is a great start. And uh, that's, that's it for today. In the next video, hopefully we'll be able to add all the text, including the title, the options. And then after that video, we'll, we'll add the scrolling and stuff. So see you next time.